Hey, math students. Today we're going to, uh, well, we're going to look at transformations of functions. So you've seen the parent functions, okay? You know what the, what the graph of y equals x looks like, what y equals x squared, y equals the square root of x, uh, graphs like that. And uh, so now I want to see, uh, knowing what those graphs look like, uh, I want to be able to predict quickly what the graph of something like y equals negative 3 times the square root of x minus 5 plus 8, what that would look like. Okay, so before we look at those, let's look at a weird function. Okay, let's look at this function that I have right here. And uh, as you see, this is a, a looks like a piecewise linear function. You got this piece here, and then this piece here, and this piece here, and this piece here. Uh, it's not particularly um, uh, symmetric. Matter of fact, it's not symmetric at all. Our domain goes from negative 18 over to uh, looks like 14. Our range goes from negative 4.5 up to uh, also 14. Um, and, uh, and then, like I said, it's piecewise linear. So uh, let's see what happens. So that's what f of x looks like. Let's see what happens if I have a g of x that equals f of x uh, plus, and uh, actually, here, let me not show it quite yet f of x uh, plus uh, 3. What's that going to do? Well, this time let's f of x, that's kind of like y, right? It's, a, it's not kind of like y, it's y. All right, so it's going to be all the y coordinates. You're just adding 3 to the y coordinates, that's just going to boost the whole thing up by 3 units, and that's exactly what happens. Instead of going to the point, uh, oh, what's going on? Okay, there we go. Instead of going to the point 414, we're going to the point 17. Instead of going to the point uh, 14, 9, we're going to the point 14, 12. All right? So uh, everything just got boosted up by three units. If I, uh, um, if I say plus 5 at the end, it gets boosted up by five units. If I say plus 1 at the end, it shifts up by one unit. And if I say negative 4, it shifts down by four units. So I'm going to take some notes. I'm going to say, so if I have f of x uh, plus k, that shifts it up k units, okay? Uh, and then, of course, if k is negative, then it's going to shift it down because that's a, uh, it's, it's the inverse of up. All right, well, that's interesting. By the way, by the way, this video on transformations, this is not supposed to be your first time around, okay? Uh, I'm assuming that everybody here has seen transformations once before, so this is a refresher. If this is your first time around, it will, it might very well go too fast. So now let's see what happens. Well, and it's not that it'll go too fast, it's just that there's not all the explanation that I might give otherwise. All right, okay, so back to the, back to the math. Uh, so now let's look at what happens if I take f of, in parentheses, x plus 2. What's going to happen? It shifts horizontally, and it doesn't shift the way that one would expect it to. You see the plus 2, and usually when you see plus 2, you think it's moving over to the right because that's the positive direction, but actually that's not the case. It's moving over to the left. Huh. Okay, and if I were to make this minus 2, well, then it would be moving over to the right. And if I make it minus 5, it's going to move to the right 5 units. So, this is moving it left and right the same way that my prior one moved it up and down. So I'm going to say, okay, f of x, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say x minus h. Okay, that'll get rid of that plus minus uh, 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 confusion. So x, f of x minus h is going to move it to the right h units. And of course, if h is negative, then you would have minus negative number, which is just like plus positive number. So that way when you see f of x plus something, you'll know it's going to be moving to the left. Okay, um, let's keep on looking. Let's say, what if I have uh, g of x equals mm, 2 times f of x? What's going to happen? Well, again, remember, f of x, that's giving you your y-coordinate for, e for each x-coordinate. And if I'm multiplying 2 times f of x, that means my y-coordinate is going to be doubled. And if you double the y-coordinate, 
that means the whole thing is going to get stretched up vertically. Whoa, let me zoom out a little bit. There we go. Okay. So my whole graph is stretched up vertically. So instead of going through the point uh, uh, 414, I'm now going through the point, uh, where is it? 428. Okay, so my y coordinate gets doubled. Uh, you'll notice that the only point that doesn't move is this point right here, the point 0, 0. Obviously, it's 0 times uh, 2 is still 0. And the points below the x axis, they get stretched down. Okay, everything gets stretched away from the x axis. Okay. Uh, and uh, so that's what happens if you multiply times 2. What if you multiply times 1 half? Okay, let me zoom in again. This time, exactly what we would expect to happen happened. Okay, if multiplying it by 2 stretches it up by a factor of 2, then multiplying it by half is going to compress it by a factor of a half. Okay, makes perfect sense. Now, what about if I have h of x equals uh, negative one-half times f, oops, times f of x. Now this graph, you can tell, let me just remove f of x for a second, you can tell that these two graphs, it's actually quite pretty, uh, one is just a reflection over the x-axis of the other one. So when we went from g of x to h of x, when this one-half turned into negative one-half, the whole thing just reflected over the x-axis. So let me just remove that middle step there. So to go from f of x, my red graph, to h of x, my purple graph, it is shrinking, well it's, it's, it's compressing vertically by a factor of a half and then flipping over the x-axis. I say first compressing then flipping, actually you could reflect it and then compress it if that's what you want to do. The order there doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so that I should take another note. Um, let's see, if I have a times f of x, that means it's going to stretch it. That's my notation for stretch. Or it's going to compress it. That's my notation for compress. Uh, by a factor of uh, a. Okay? And if a is less than zero, then it's going to uh, flip it over the x-axis. It's going to it's going to reflect it over the x-axis. That's my notation for that. I hope it makes sense. Okay, let's keep going. And now let's look at, uh, we can hide uh, h of x, and now let's look at what if g of x oops, were, instead of 2 times f of x, let's look at f of 2x. Okay, well 2 times f of x stretched it vertically and uh, this time we're inside the, the parentheses so I'm thinking it's probably going to affect it horizontally so I'm thinking it's going to stretch it horizontally, right? No, it doesn't. It compresses it horizontally which is, if you think about it, the minus h moving to the right and the times 2 compressing it, both of those are counterintuitive. When when the when the uh, um, the transformation is happening inside the parentheses, that is in our order of operations, when it happens before you apply f of x, it's kind of counterintuitive. And then the stuff that happens after f of x, whether you're adding k or multiplying times a, that's more intuitive. Okay, um, so what we see is, sure enough, when you uh, are the left side of our uh, uh, um, domain is the point negative nine three instead of uh, negative 18, 3. So all of our x-coordinates got divided by 2. And if we did uh, 0.5 here instead, sure enough they would be stretched out by 2. Okay? And so what this is telling us is um, that, let's see, I'm going to take f of, let's call it b. I've seen different books use different things. Uh, sometimes books use B, sometimes books use Q for some reason, I don't know, it doesn't matter, okay, it's just a parameter. So F of B times X is going to stretch it out horizontally, or compress it horizontally, that's my notation for that, by a factor of, instead of B, it's actually the reciprocal of B, which is 1 over B, okay? And if 
B is negative, then what if B is negative? I don't know. Let's find out. Negative. Oh! It flips it over the y-axis. Okay. So if B is negative, then it's going to reflect over the y-axis. That's me reflecting over the y-axis. Okay? This is pretty much what you need to know. Well, it's not everything you need to know. Let me, uh, uh, let me apply this now to a couple of functions that we're used to. Uh, let's look at, um, here we go, let's look at f of x equals x squared. Okay? We all know x squared. It goes to the point 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. Your y-coordinate is always the square of your x-coordinate. Well, now what I want to see is, I want to see what is uh, g of x if g of x is uh, one half, oops, one half times uh, x plus three, and that's going to be squared minus seven. Okay, so let's look at this function here. Uh, x plus three, that's x minus h, so that means h is negative three. We have a minus seven on the very end, so that means k is negative seven. So that means this point right here, the vertex of the parabola, is going to move to the point negative 3, negative 7. Let me just add a table. Uh, and let me move it down. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to go through the point negative 3, negative 7. And that's, oh, that's way down there. Okay? And uh, then what else is happening? Well, I've got this 1 half in front, which means the whole thing is being compressed by a factor of one half. So on my parent function, as I go from the vertex over one, I go up one. So on this function, as I go over one, so from negative three to negative two, negative two, I'm going to go up a half instead of one. So I'm going to go from negative seven to negative 6.5. Okay. And on my parent function, as I go over two, I would go up four. Well, on this one, as I go over two, I'm only going up half of four, which is two. So this will go through the point negative one and negative five. All right, negative one and negative five. And because of the, uh, uh, sim the, the symmetry, I almost said symmetricism. That is not a word. Because of the symmetry of a parabola, I also know that uh, on the other side, I'm going to have negative four. That's going to the left one. It's also going to be negative 6.5 and negative 5. We'll go through negative 5, negative 5 like that. Okay? That's what I think my parabola is going to look like. And sure enough, there it is going through those points. Okay? Now, you may say to yourself, well, I mean, why can't I just like plug in some, uh, uh, some x's and find out what the y's are and graph it that way? No problem. You can do that. Okay? The problem is, let's say I decide to start graphing at x equals zero, and then I move over to the right. Well, it's not going to necessarily look like a parabola, okay? I'm not going to see the vertex of that parabola. Being able to look at this and say, ah, my vertex is negative three, negative seven, it's a really good way to start graphing. Uh, let's look at a different one. Let's look at a different parent function. Let's look at uh, square root of x. So there is the square root of x, and uh, we all know what that looks like. Let me just get rid of this other stuff. Oops. Okay. Okay, sorry, I lost myself there for a second. And, oh, no, 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 I just want to do one line. Okay, sorry. Um, so, uh, this goes through, which points does it go through? It goes through point zero, zero, because the square root is zero, zero. It goes to the point one, one, because the square root of, uh, there it is, the square root of one is one. It goes to the point four, two, because the square root of four is two. It goes to the point nine, three, because the square root of nine is three, etc., etc. All right? So, let's see what the graph of three times two x plus ten, uh, hey, I meant to put a square root there. square root of 
2x plus 10 um, minus 2. Okay. Oh no! I meant to find out and now it's already there. Well, shoot, that's okay. Because look, it's actually not what I expected to see. The vertex of my graph is at the point negative 5, negative 2. I thought it would be a negative 10, negative 2. What gives? I'll tell you what gives. Order of operations. What you want to do is you want to change this 2x plus 10 and instead call it 2 times x plus 5. It's the same thing. Okay, we're just factoring out a 2. Okay, because what you do is first you add the h, then you multiply times the b, then you uh, uh, apply your function, whatever your parent function is, f of x, then you multiply times a, then you add the, the k at the very end. Okay, so it's important that we have these parentheses here. Uh, now we can see, okay, my vertex is going to be the point negative 5, uh, negative 2, which uh, negative 5, negative 2, which yes, there it is. And I also know that since this is being multiplied, ooh, it's being multiplied times 3 vertically and being compressed by a half horizontally. Ha ha. So instead of going over 1, up 1, I'm going to go over uh, 1 half to negative 4.5 and up 3 to 1. And sure enough, that point's on the graph. And instead of going over 4, up 2, like in our uh, parent function, I'm going to be going over half of 4, which is 2. So from negative 5, that's going to be negative 3. And, uh, and then I'm going up 2 times 2, which is, sorry, 3 times 2, because there's a 3 there, which is 6. And from negative 2, that's going to be 4. And sure enough, that's on the graph as well. Okay? So that's how that graph got transformed. It got shifted to the left five units, down two units, and then stretched up by three, and then compressed by one half. It's quite a bit. Let's do one more, and then I'm going to let you go. Uh, let's do g of x equals negative two. Uh-huh, I've got some reflecting going on, and I'm going to hide it first. Negative two times the square root of negative one-half times x minus one. I'm not making you factor it out this time. I'm just giving it to you that way. Plus six. Okay? So, uh, this time um, I can see that my uh, my vertex is going to be the point one, six. So one, six. That point's going to be on there. Okay? And, but, ho, oh, what else do I see? This is negative, and this is also negative. So it's going to, because of the negative 2, it's going to rotate, or not rotate, it's going to reflect over the x-axis, and then because of the negative 1 half, it's going to reflect over the y-axis. So this thing, instead of going up and to the right, it's going to be going down and to the left. Okay. And this tells me, this one half tells me it's going to stretch horizontally by two. And this two tells me it's going to stretch vertically by two. So instead of going over one, up one, I'm going over two, down two, to the point negative one, negative four. So negative one and negative four. Uh, oops, not negative four, four. That's where I want it to be, okay? Now, instead of going over 4 and up 2, I'm going to the left uh, 2 times 4, which is 8, and then down 2 times 2, which is 4. So 1 minus 8 is going to give me uh, negative 7, and uh, 6 minus 4 is going to give me 2. So it's going to be through those three points and Look at that. Sure enough, it is. Okay? All right. Hope this brings back some old memories. I hope they're fond memories, because after all, this really makes it so much easier to graph than if you didn't have this tool uh, handy. Okay? I will see you at the next video. Bye-bye.